we're not looking to see conflict with China. We're seeking competition. Um, and we can do that strategically. We can do that safely. Um, and we can do that with our partners and allies in the region and all around the world. All right. That was Deputy Pentagon Press Secretary Sabrina Singh explaining the Biden administration's uh, policy on China. Xi Jinping, meanwhile, is in Saudi Arabia, meeting with the Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The two expected to discuss energy and sign agreements worth more than $25, uh, $29 billion. Joining me right now is Stevens, Inc., executive vice president. She is senior policy advisor and former senior advisor to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Mary Kissel is here. Mary, great to see you. It's great to be with you, Thanks so much for being here. So what do you make of Xi Jinping making the rounds now in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, well, this is a very significant visit, Maria, and it's not the first time that Xi Jinping has attempted to put a wedge between the United States and our allies. Um, recall that you know, he recently welcomed some top EU representatives to Beijing because he'd like to pull the EU away from us. Same thing going on here in Saudi Arabia. He's demonstrating, hey, Saudi Arabia doesn't have to just sell oil to the rest of the world or you know, buy weapons from the United States. They can just do business with China. They can buy weapons from us. They can sell oil to us. And in fact, they're a major trading partner of Saudi Arabia. So you'll see Xi Jinping got a welcome that was not afforded to President Biden. The Chinese airline landed with great fanfare. He was welcomed at the airport with high representatives from Saudi Arabia. So this is a significant strategic move by China. And it's a reminder that if we shun our allies, it will have consequences. And yet we don't have any policy pushing back on this uh, authoritarianism. I mean, what, what should the United States be doing and where is this going in terms of the U.S. And, and, and China's relations? Well, I think it's more than just the U.S. and China, right? This is the free world versus right. a block of nations, yeah. right? Communist China, Iran, Russia, North Korea, Pakistan, yeah, etc. But it's not just these two blocks. It's these nations in the middle that are going to be pivotal, whether it's Saudi Arabia, whether it's Turkey, whether it's it's Brazil, whether it's India, and we have to pay. And we, you're right, we need to come up with a strategy. We have to incent these countries to be on our side. And that's what we're not, that's the kind of thinking that I think we're, we're not quite doing. Yet. I think he makes such a great point that he's putting this wedge, you know, between the United States and our own allies. And that was on full display when Joe Biden met with Xi Jinping the other day at the G20, right? I mean, uh, Xi Jinping took one step. Biden had to walk across the entire stage, you know, basically bowing to the king, Xi Jinping. And they've got surveillance programs in America, even a police station here in America. Yeah, well, it's very interesting when I talk to our clients about their investments, right? And you, you, not necessarily even having to invest in China, right? I mean, there are a lot of American companies that have a significant amount of spo exposure right. to communist China. And they're asking me, you know, what is going on? Is this going to stabilize? You saw markets rally, even at the hint that China might reopen. And so they're coming to me and they're saying, well, you know, is everything OK? Do I have to worry about these investments anymore? And our answer is no. You do have to worry because the nature of this regime is not going to change. So Joe Biden in this administration may want dialogue. Markets may rally in the short term, but medium to long term, this dynamic is not changing. And the risk profile is only getting more complicated and significant over time. And we have to be honest about that. So you've got people looking at, you know, different plays. They're looking at, you know, the reshoring to Mexico, looking at companies that facilitate that. They're looking at energy companies that are going to supply Europe as Europe goes to look for other sources of energy that don't come from Russia. But I think this Xi visit is quite significant, Maria. I think it's a dynamic and a sign that we are in an era that, that there's no turning back from. This is not the 9-11 era. This is not the Cold War. This is something very different. This is incredible. Meanwhile, there's this surveillance on American citizens via TikTok. The negotiations between TikTok and the government delayed, they tell us, over national security concerns. Indiana, uh, the AG in Indiana, now suing TikTok, accusing the company of targeting minors with adult content, as well as surveillance programs in place. State Attorney General Todd Rakita writes this. TikTok is actively exposing our children to drug use, alcohol abuse, profanity, and sexual explicit material at a young age. This is part of the suit. The other part is the fact that it is, uh, you know, getting all of this information on minors. Texas Governor Greg Abbott became the fifth state uh, to ban TikTok on government-issued devices. So this is gaining some strength here on TikTok, and yet we don't have a decision on a federal level. No, I think it's encouraging 
that folks on both sides of the aisle are waking up to this because, as you said, Maria, it's not just a surveillance threat. It's an offensive weapon that you can use to manipulate people who are using the app. India banned this app in June 2020 when I was in the administration, and they didn't just ban TikTok. Eventually, they banned almost 60 apps. We should be following their lead. Why aren't we banning things like, for example, WeChat, which many Chinese Americans use here in New York, and they get propagandized yeah. by the government. Right? It's their only source of news. Yeah. So it's not just TikTok. It's a whole suite of apps that we need to look very carefully at. And you know what? I hope this administration wakes up because this isn't a partisan issue. National security is not a partisan thing. That's right. We need to, uh, the first role of government is the security of its citizens. Yeah. And, and, and looking at things like this where you know, economic innovation is now becoming a, a military, a national security issue, that's something that we have to grapple with, recognize, and deal with. Well, I mean, look, if that were a priority, the southern border would not be wide open. But it is not a priority. But real quick on this issue, Huawei, right? Recently, the FCC said that it was going to ban new orders from Huawei. But what about all the Huawei equipment that is already in place? It's already, as Secretary Pompeo says, inside the gates of America. So whatever the FCC is saying about what's to come with Huawei, I want to know what they're going to do with the Huawei equipment that is already here and in so many corporations and uh, surveillance. No, look, uh, it, it, it's a big problem. And you, you've identified the problem. What about the surveillance cameras, you know, in my apartment building, which are Chinese made, right? I mean, this is, a, this is an issue that is just so complex and so difficult. And just back to where we began, Saudi Arabia, Huawei has built a lot of their telecommunications infrastructure. That happened under a, re a Republican administration that was friendly to Saudi. This is a big challenge. The good news is that we are waking up. Our allies and friends in places like Britain and Australia have woken up. But you're right. The scale of this challenge is immense. And I think, unfortunately, it may take a major shock, China invading another country in a significant way, or, you know, we have a massive cyber attack or something happening, to, to really give our political actors the courage to do what's right. Because ultimately, you know, it takes an enormous amount of political courage to stand up and say, hey, I'm going to ban an app yeah. that everybody's kids around the block are using, right? Who's going to do that unless they're forced to do it? Really important to interview. Mary, thank you. Thank you Great for to having see you. Me. Mary Kissel joining us this morning.